Hi, everybody. Welcome to Network in Action. My name is Ronnie. Uh, today, I have the pleasure to talk with Gareth Weiner. He is the owner and founder of Level 6 Small Business Transformation, uh, right here in the Austin area. Hey, Gareth. How's it going? I'm doing very well, Ronnie. Thanks for having us. Oh, I'm very, very excited. I have a lot of questions for you. So uh, let's start with the simple question. So, Gareth, tell us, what is it that you do? Uh, what is it that we do? Well, primarily, uh, we help small business owners who are struggling with either uh, their people, their processes, or their profits uh, to basically um, help them transform their business into a, an organization that's um, predictable, profitable, and hopefully at the end of the time that we start working, that, that, that we work together, it's going to be a business that works for them as opposed to them working for it, right? So yeah. the goal is predictability, profitability, and a business that runs without them in it. Very interesting. So, you know, I, I've been doing these interviews for a while, if you guys have been watching me, and um, I, I talked to a few business coaches. So do you have like something more specific about level six that might separate you apart from other coaches? Yeah, so level six has a couple of different meanings to it, right? And so the first one is level six energy, right? And so all of the coaches, including myself that we have on the team, they're all certified professional coaches through an organization called IPEC, which is IPEC which is the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching. Um, and through that program, you know, we've learned the art of coaching around energy leadership, right? And kind of in a nutshell, it, it works with uh, teaching people on how to use their social and emotional intelligence to recognize and control their energy levels, like their levels of enthusiasm. Um, so helping them recognize what's driving, you know, how they're showing up in a conversation given, given the circumstances, right? Because a lot of people out there that come from a fear-based way of being, um, and it shows up in anxiety, shows up in sadness, shows up with anger and frustration um, and helping our clients recognize what those triggers are and where they're coming from and helping them be able to transform those, those beliefs and thought patterns that are triggering those types of energies uh, so that we can transform into more of a, you know, a peaceful or collaborative or joyful or passionate state. And so mm -hmm. level six energy, when we talk about IPEC and energy leadership is passion and creativity, right? So we really want to get our clients into a state of passion and creativity and then start working with them on the business, right? Because if they're in that state, they're, um, the way that they show up in the world is going to really transform the way that the world shows up for them. Very That's, interesting. So this is part of that holistic um, approach you were mentioning earlier. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, after mindset and energy leadership, um, we really look at the business from a holistic perspective. So we start with strategic direction, right? Where is the business going? How is it going to get there? How often and how well are they communicating that to the rest of the team? Uh, we look at their financials, you know, starting with, you know, are the books up to date? Do they know what their numbers are in terms of their gross profits, their net profits and so forth? Um, then from there, you know, um, the other thing we bring to the table is we kind of call it a full service transformation program because I have a, um, a whole team of um, financial experts, marketing experts, sales experts and whatnot that we can refer our clients to when they get to a certain level of maturity within their business so that we can help that particular area with the right specialties. But yeah, so we look at finance, we look at branding. Um, one of the things that we've been focused on, on mainly just in the Austin area within the construction and trades industries is people, right? How do we help our clients really tap into what they need to do to, to be able to set themselves apart as a, as a key employer uh, to attract the right candidates and keep their team on board for the long haul, right? Because the, the construction industry right now in Austin is going crazy. And a lot of people are having a hard time finding and keeping really good people. Um, and to me, I kind of look at that, um, you know, in a very different way than a lot of other people do in terms of hiring. So uh, we've got that going for us. And we also look at, you know, how do we standardize and optimize in, um, their delivery processes so that, they, you know, they do the same thing each and every time the same way. And they can manage that. They can monitor that. They can scale that. And then we look at sales and marketing, right? How do we increase our conversions? And then how, how do we increase the, the level and the quality of the leads that are coming into the business so that we can help them grow? Very interesting. So from what I'm kind of gathering, and again, this is experience of talking to other people, I feel like you guys are actually working opposite. Most business coaches will come in with, we need to find you, um, you know, where we where you can save more money, uh, how to sell better. Um, like they're coming in actually from like the last step you just mentioned is, is usually their first lead in. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like you guys are actually focusing more on people and, well, it's, I like it's actually the, really nice. The program that we have is really helping them build their business from the inside out, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously the inside, the core of everything most of most small businesses is the owner, right? And the, and the principal person that's involved in that business. Um, it's usually the person who founded the business and they've been working in it for anywhere from, you know, one to five to 10 to 20 years. 
Um, a lot of the clients that we start working with, they have anywhere between, you know, five to 15, 20 employees, you know, from a small business perspective. And the owner and the founder has still got their fingers in most of the operations side of things, right? And so, you know, one of the key things is helping them figure out what they want to get out of that business, right? And who are they as an individual or a human being and what's driving them, you know, and what they really, really want to get out of it. And then from there, we can start expanding, you know, into, you know, the strategic direction, into the branding, into the people strategy. And then um, I always like to say, we focus on marketing last, not first, right? Because yeah. one of the distinctions that I have between branding and marketing uh, branding is your strategic approach to the marketplace, right? Who are you in the marketplace? What's your market dominating position? How are you distinguishing yourself from the competitors um, yeah. that are in your industry? How are you creating some compelling messaging to get their attention, to engage them in, in your story? What kind of offers are you putting on the table to you know, really bring them in? So that's from a strategic perspective. And then uh, my distinction between branding and marketing is we take that brand message and then we put that out there into the different marketing channels with the sole intention of generating um, and capturing leads and nurturing those leads into what we call high probability prospects, right? And high probability prospects um, are people who want your services because people never buy what they need. They only buy what they want, right? Um, they can afford your services because you're, you've now identified who your ideal client is and what kind of price range you want to be dealing with. And they're ready to buy now, right? So they're ready to actually move forward with the conversation in terms of doing business with you. So me, to me, marketing is about identifying who they are, capturing them, nurturing them to the point where they qualify themselves as high probability prospects. And then from there, we move into sales or enrollment or agreement conversations uh, to be able to convert those prospects into paying clients. Yeah. But I always say we focus on marketing last, not first, because if worst case, or best case scenario is you spend a few thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars. I was talking to somebody last week who spent twenty thousand dollars in quarter one of twenty twenty one, didn't get a single return on it right? Because they just didn't understand to do the brain, the branding piece first and then work on the marketing, right? But if you do marketing first and it, and it doesn't work, you're going to lose your money. But if you do marketing first and it does work and you don't have the right sales infrastructure in place to convert all of those leads into paying clients, then you're wasting your time as well. Absolutely. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. So the program that I've created, we start with mindset, then we do strategic direction, then we do finance, right? Then we look at branding, then we look at people strategy, then we look at delivery systems, then we look at sales, and then we look at marketing, right? In that order, um, just because it makes sense to build that business from the inside out. Now, obviously there's um, caveats and exceptions to the rule, right? If you don't have enough business coming in and you're losing money by the day, then we really need to look at how do we inject more capital into the business, go out and find immediate revenue uh, yeah. to get things rolling again. But uh, you know, for the most part, it's a very strategic process. Um, takes anywhere from 12 months to three years uh, to execute it. Um, but uh, you know what we do first with clients is we sit in, we come in, we do a strengths and weaknesses assessment on all of those key areas. We identify where the gaps are and we customize a step-by-step -step roadmap for them to follow over that 12 month period to get their business to a point where um, they're at what we call a level five, right? So all of those different areas are functioning um, optimally within the business. Okay, got it. <laughs> so let's jump to the next question. Um, so how long have you been in business? Let me, I forgot to ask that. Uh, well, level six has been in operation for, I guess, a couple of years. Uh, officially, I started working as a paid you know, professional business coach, I think back in 2011. Oh, wow, uh, okay. And so I've been, I've been doing it part-time, uh, working with a handful of clients as I was working my IT career. Because uh, I come from an IT software development background, um, wow. quality assurance, business analysis, project management, DevOps management, um, basically did everything in, in IT except for writing the code. Um, mm -hmm. But bringing all of that systems thinking and the workflow management, business process optimization into the small business space from the IT space. Um, but I jumped ship to start my uh, small business coaching slash consulting firm. Uh, I think it was in the beginning of 2019. Um, yep. We acted as a solopreneur uh, for nine months after starting it. And it took a few months to get the client list up. And then I started working on how do I create a business that can scale, right? And when you're talking about the service-based business where it's primarily hands-on people working with people, creating something that can scale is really the key, right? And that's, so I'm leading by example, hopefully. Um, I created a system that I can now bring on coaches. I can train the coaches. I can help them with the delivery aspect of it. Um, so that now as we as we grow, all I need to do to grow is to be able to bring on more coaches. 
Uh, Very cool. And I, I'd actually, if you guys check out um, Level 6 Small Transformations website, uh, you will see that the list of coaches is, is pretty good and they're all across the country. I saw a lady in Miami. Uh, you're here in Austin. Uh, my memory is failing me. <laughs> but there was a big list there. I had to scroll, um, you know, quite a lot down to get to the bottom. So, yeah. um, so it's really, like you said, you are leading by example uh, and it's wonderful. But let me ask you this. So you've been doing this for about 10 years and level six been around for a couple of years now. Um, do you have a favorite, you know, maybe customer service story to share with us? Um, well, they're all favorites, uh, but I can tell you this morning, I worked with a couple of clients because um, recently the last three to six months, we've decided to, to focus primarily on working with residential construction and trades companies and home service companies. Uh, but I checked in with one of my clients this morning who we're coming up on a 12, uh, 12 month mark now. And uh, he checked in with um, some wins this morning to say that he's about three weeks away from surpassing his 2020 total revenue goals. Um, and we're six months into 2021. So, um, you know, we, we had a pretty good increase last year in the first six months, but we're going to uh, at least double um, what he did last year in terms of revenue. But I think what's, um, there's two other really cool things about Jim and what he's doing at the moment is uh, the first one is that he's now got a team of, I think as of Monday, he's going to have six people on his team. When we started working together, it was him and um, one other technician. And now he's got a team of six technicians working right wow. We're 12 months in and we've added five more people to his team, uh, which was huge for him, you know, coming from a solopreneur perspective. Um, but I think even the, the better thing that we started working on this morning is by, I think the middle of August, He's actually taking a three week vacation to Croatia. He's not going to be there, uh, but his business is going to be at full swing. It's going to be at 80, 90% capacity and it's going to be functioning without him needing to be involved with it. Wow. That's, that's a dream. That's, that's a, a dream. Huge, huge step. So when he comes back from that vacation, um, obviously there's going to be a few things that he'll need to catch up on and potentially clean up a little bit, but that's going to be a huge turning point, right? Because oh. then we'll be able to prove the methodology works uh, for him. And then he's created a business that, you know, it's predictable, it's profitable, and it can function without him needing to be there. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Like, as a business owner, and I always say it on my interviews, um, my goodness, like taking a vacation sounds like, like such a remote dream. And, and you know, we, we do everything, right? And, mm -hmm. and it would be nice to have somebody else do the work for you. That's a damage control we come back, right? Like, okay. <laughs> Uh, well, that's the entrepreneurial story, isn't it? You know, we, we get really good at something. And mm -hmm. you know, most of the people that I work with have a very similar story, the same as mine. Um, you know, we, we got really good at doing what we wanted to do. We realized we wanted to get a bigger piece of the pie. We wanted to follow that new American dream of going into business for yourself. Uh, but what we tend to forget or not realize is that um, instead of exchanging one hat for 12 others, we're actually taking on 12 more jobs when we go into business for ourselves, right? And those 12 jobs really, really, yeah. really don't know how to do them very well, right? And so uh, <laughs> most of the clients I start working with that are in that small startup stage, um, you know, they're really good at doing what they do. They're probably some of the best technicians out there, but they really struggle when it comes to running the business. So- oh, Absolutely, there's, again, I can attest it for myself. Um, I, I'm by trade, I have a degree in architecture. Right. I went to a whole different direction because I wanted to own my own business. Right. But I am in the end of the day, I'm a designer. No matter how you look at it, this is what I like to do. I'm mm -hmm. by no means a bookkeeper. I'm by no means a marketer. Yep. I'm, you know, and, and we have to put on these hats because nobody else is going to do it. Right. And you don't want to outsource it because it's going to cost you money trying to keep profit in. So, mm -hmm. like you said, those 12 hats, goodness, those are. I'm not going to say have, I'm going to say those are big shoes to fill in every, every time that something happens with, with, yeah. with the business. So I definitely understand. So we've been talking now for about 10 minutes, right? And we haven't said the word COVID-19. So let's, uh, let's ask the COVID question. Mm -hmm. I wish I had music queued in in that moment of like, you know, something silly. But um, COVID-19 has been a huge factor in our lives. And, you know, Level 6 did start in 2019. So you had a pretty much six months of, you know, having fun. And then, you know, this happened, we had the shutdown. So has COVID-19 affected your business? I would say COVID has been extraordinarily good for my business and also my clients' businesses as well, right? I think um, if I look back 
um, and the clients we did have last year, um, all of them had the best years ever, you know, during the COVID experience. I think the, the March, April period when, um, you know, COVID really kicked in in the US, uh, obviously there was a lot of panic. There was a lot of um, suffering happening. You know, people were getting sick. A lot of people were uh, getting very scared, very, very panicky for, for good reason. Um, but at the same time as, you know, in business, you know, the show must go on, right? And so uh, we are able to kind of sit back, take a look at what was actually happening, what was the opportunity in the chaos, because there's always opportunity underneath the chaos. Um, and, you know, for some businesses, it was a matter of pivoting. For others, it was just a matter of um, actually investing in more marketing, right? Because, um, you know, as people start to panic, people start to make, you know, strange decisions, if you will. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, working with home residential home services companies and trades, um, the, the need for their services is not going anywhere. In fact, it's, it's, it's the increase of demand is going up and up and up. Um, and here in Texas, obviously, we had an interesting winter uh, in February when the freeze came through um, and the whole state shut down for a week or so. Um, and we're still recovering from it. And the, the downstream economical impacts of that have just been extraordinary. Um, Especially for a lot of your clients from the construction. Um, yep. We have lead time on, 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 on everything right now. It's at least seven a week. Yep. And so, again, there's a lot of people who are in the industry. There was a lot of business. The phone was ringing off the hook. They did everything they could to answer as many calls as they could. Um, but that just exponentially illuminated the fact that their, their basic business fundamentals weren't as good as what they could be. Right. And they could have taken on a whole lot more than what they did. A lot of people are doing twice as much revenue now than they were three months ago. Mm -hmm. But the, the gaps in the infrastructure is starting to show. Right. The stress levels are going up. Uh, the people frustrations are going up. People are now, you know, banging on their competitors' doors, offering their staff, you know, better offers. Yeah. They want to bring in more people, and that's really the only way they know how to do it for some for some of them. Um, and if you've got a team of fifteen different employees and your competitors are calling them while they're at work or visiting job sites and saying, "Hey, they do it. They do it. Everybody yeah. plays dirty. That's yeah. something people don't understand. People are dirty. Like, well, they'll do." What you know, some folks out there they'll do whatever it takes to get people to come on board. But um, you know, so we've got to really sit back and help them work on their brand, not only from a customer's perspective, but from an employee perspective as well. Yeah, absolutely. How do they position themselves as the ideal person to work for in this particular trade or in this industry? Uh, absolutely. That's really where a lot of the core work is going on at the moment. Interesting. I think that um, the points you're bringing up are, are very not normal business coach business coach conversation I had before and I really appreciate it and I think our viewers are going to really enjoy our conversation because of it and I'm really glad that COVID-19 actually helped you bring up business more um, but I'm going to ask you your bonus question now you ready <laughs> um, so obviously now we're talking on zoom which is the new reality right were you were you were you zooming before it was cool? That's the question. Like, how were you usually doing your coaching? Bit. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna be gratitude have gratitude for COVID because it really optimized some of the work I was doing with my clients. Um, the philosophy I have with Level Six is that we want to have local coaches working with local business owners, mm -hmm. right? Um, which meant I spent a lot of time in you know behind the wheel, face to face, driving to and from my clients' businesses and whatnot, and doing in person yeah. sessions. Uh, what we realized during COVID was it wasn't as essential as what we thought, like every other business, especially the large corporations, you know, everybody's working remotely virtual now, uh, but I still love the face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, can't lie. Uh, so, you know, typically if I have a, have a session with a client that's going to take more than an hour and a half to two hours, we're going to do it in person, right? Yeah. All of my clients right now are within about a 10 mile drive from my house anyway. But it's just more efficient for me. It's more efficient for them to be able to have our weekly calls on, on Zoom so we can check in, we can process through issues, we can figure out what's the root cause, how to address, how to resolve and move forward. Uh, but every month we'd like to sit down and do a two or three hour workshop and really get, get deeper into whatever area that we want to focus on for that particular month or that particular quarter. Um, Very so you um, another bonus question. So you are in the Austin area. Do you have a coach here in Houston? Uh, I do have one in Houston, but she's at capacity right now. So we're looking to bring on more. Yes. Got that. So you guys are hiring. Okay. Guys is hiring. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing with level six. Currently right now, we're only the coaches that we have on board. They have to be IPEC graduates. 
right? Because part of the process and the mindset work, the energy leadership that we bring to the table, you have to go through that, that training and that certification process to be able to be able to deliver what, what it is that we do. Uh, so it's good in a way because I kind of look at IPEC as, a, as an employee factory or, you know, as a, as a coach factory uh, that I can bring on board for those folks who are passionate about working with small business owners. Absolutely. Right. That sounds so cool. But uh, so that, you know, I have started working with uh, my coach on potentially expanding that, but it's in the preliminary stages at this point. Okay, okay. All right, well, Gareth, everything sounds amazing. Level six is like, sounds like where I need my business to be like being, being coached by right now. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind sharing with us uh, what is the best way to reach you? Yep, uh, I will, but I, I, if I can, I'm going to add one more distinction uh, between you know what it is what we uh, between us and other competitors. We probably spend up to three, potentially four hours uh, with a potential client before we actually you know sign a contract and start doing business together. So, mm -hmm. you know what that looks like is typical the 30 minute introduction call where we kind of break the ice a little bit, talk about each other's businesses, what's going on, what are the challenges, see if it's going to be a good fit. Um, from there, we actually move into what we call the level six demonstration, which is usually about 90 minutes where we actually take them through the full business assessment. We look at their strengths, we look at the weaknesses, and we give them the roadmap um, you know, for free with no cost to the, to the client um, that we're, we are going to follow with them over the next four months if they decide to move forward with us. Right? So I want to give them a full exposure of what it is that they're going to experience, uh, what they can expect from us, what we're going to expect from them. And then after that, um, that assessment and the roadmap generation, we then move into what we call a, a discovery session. And that's probably my favorite part because now we've given them an exposure about what the experience is going to look like. Then we sit down and we talk about what they want to achieve, right? What are the outcomes that they want to get as we go through this transformation process? And now um, just recently I've, I've made it a requirement that if it's a, if it's a family business, right? If it's a husband and wife team or a partner, partner team, we make it a requirement that we sit down with the family and we talk about how that business has been impacting that family and the relationships in it up until this point, right? Because wow. I've had some experience in the past where we've helped people grow their, grow their businesses, but at the same time, their marriage is falling apart, mm -hmm. right? And so now okay. is we want to make sure that we're healing both things at the same time. And we're transforming not only the business, not only the human beings that are in that business, but also the relationship that, that, they, that they have with their significant others. Absolutely. You can use this uh, little tidbit for everybody. Uh, honey, if you're not part of my, um, shoot, how did it go? Honey, if you're not part of my um, struggle, you're not part of my success. <laughs> oh, there you go. And I think. Um, so my husband always delivers packages for us. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> always bring them, you know, instead of going to the post office, I bring it to him to drop it off for me because I just don't have the time. Yep. So. Yeah, so for us, it's just as much about the relationships and, and how that human being is showing up in the world and, you know, what are they experiencing uh, as just as much as it is building the business and making and making a profit, right? Yeah, and so, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, if anybody wanted to get in touch, again, they can go to the website, level6transformation.com. Um, right now, it's my cell phone number on there because, you know, we're still a relatively small company and I want to make sure that we're bringing in the right clients. Um, but if we find out that's going to be a good fit for one of the other coaches, I'll make that introduction after the introduction call and we can take them through the demo. We can do the discovery call. And then from there, we negotiate, um, you know, what the outcomes are they want to achieve. And, or oh, another differentiator is that I've done this enough now that I know that our process works so we can guarantee the outcomes, right? So if there's any business owners out there that have always thought about working with a coach, but they're not quite bought into it, we have a guarantee in place that unless you hit the, the goals that we're going to co-create together, then we're going to keep working with you until we hit those goals at no cost to you. Very nice. I know that what we did works and it works really well as long as we both show up and play our roles. Um, yeah, absolutely. So anyway, absolutely. It all starts with that 30 minute introduction call. Awesome. So guys, please give Gareth a call. Um, his number is listed on his website, like he was saying. Um, you have the free introductory introduction. Sorry, you have your free introductory um, conversation free introduction. with him and you can move forward. Yeah, I was going to say, free introduction call, free business assessment and roadmap, which if they don't want to move forward with us, they can take that and run with it themselves. And then we spend another two hours with them before we sign a contract and talk about doing any, any money together. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you guys for your time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks, Ronnie. Take care.